What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Learn Roblox Studio series. In today's episode, we are going to be covering the Creating Player Tools chapter. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button. Additionally, hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you do enjoy the video and you want to see more Roblox development content. I also do have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check it out and support me if you're feeling kind enough. As always, there's a link down below in the description to the article that we're going to be covering today. And with that being said, let's get into it. Tools are a simple way to manage items that players can hold in their hand and use in game. They can range from weapons such as swords to food items. In this course, you'll learn how to create a tool in the shape of a laser blaster that will play sound effects when equipped or activated. I'm not gonna lie, that blaster looked pretty cool. So, creating the tool. The tool object is the basis of any tool in Roblox, so you'll need to create one. It's easier to change how the tools look by adding objects such as parts and mesh parts to the tool in the workspace where they are visible. So we're going to go inside of our game, and inside of the workspace, we are going to click the plus icon, and we are going to add a brand new tool. Then, we are going to rename it to Blaster. The name doesn't matter so much, it's just whatever you want to name it specifically, but for this whole demonstration, this is what we're going to be following. Then, we are going to insert a mesh part inside of the tool, and then in the mesh part we're actually going to modify the mesh id and the id that we're going to set it to is this specific one provided by them i will put this specific id either in a pinned comment or in the description so you guys can easily click it if you're not already following with the article and then after the mesh id we're also going to change the texture id so search up texture id there we go and we're going to change it to this as well so now let's go ahead and hit f on this so that we can actually focus it and see where it's at and let's move this over so it's not inside of a mountain move it up a little bit Okay, there we go. We've now got a pretty good view of this little blaster right here, which looks pretty cool. The tool needs a part named handle for the player to hold. Change the name of the mesh part to handle. Now, this is really important because when you make a tool, handle is a very key component that a lot of tools usually require. And that actually allows you to modify or set where you want the player to hold the specific tool from. So we're going to rename this to capital H and then handle. Make sure that the first letter of handle is capitalized. It's sort of like leader stats for player data. The L in leader stats needs to be lowercase and the h in this handle needs to be uppercase if you don't include a part named handle in the tool it will drop to the ground when a player tries to equip it storing the tool tools can be kept in the game world as collectible items or given to all players as starter tools collectible tool the blaster is currently a child of the workspace so it'll be collectible a player can pick up the tool by touching it causing it to become a child of the character model the tool will then be equipped and placed inside of their hotbar so to actually demonstrate this for you what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this i'm going to move it onto the island and we'll move our spawn location over there as well so i can just spawn like directly right here and go pick it up and then i'll start the game and i'll demonstrate exactly what they mean so we see the tool right here let's go ahead and step on it we do have the blaster equipped we can't really move around with it we keep getting teleported back to the original spot but we do actually have it equipped now understanding the backpack during gameplay unequipped tools are stored within the player's hierarchy in the backpack and then move to their character model when equipped any tool that becomes a child of a character will be automatically equipped Equipped. So what they mean by this is let's go ahead and start the game. Let's go inside of the workspace and look for my character. So monster. And then we can also scroll down to players, open up monster as well. And then we have a backpack folder right here. So let's go ahead and pick up this item. And now we see that we have it equipped and nothing has been changed with inside of backpack. But if we look inside of our character model, we actually see that we now have the blaster inside of here. Let's go ahead and unequip it by just clicking one since that's in our hotbar. And we can see that the blaster has now been removed from our character model and actually put inside of the backpack folder right here. You might be thinking, what does this mean to me? Well, in the future, when you're giving players tools or equipping them or seeing if the player has a specific tool equipped, you might be trying to check if it's either in the character or in the backpack. And this is just something something that's good to know because otherwise you might be confused why is the blaster not appearing in the backpack and that's because it's appearing in the character or vice versa starter tool storing a tool in starter pack will place it in the player's backpack when they join the game or respawn so let's say for instance we take the blaster outside of the workspace and we actually put it inside of starter pack now let's go ahead and start our game and now we actually have the blaster automatically in our inventory as soon as we spawn in if you're curious of does this actually work for multiple clients not just the first person who joins or something like that yeah, both of these characters, we just load in with two different accounts, for instance, and both of them do actually have the blaster. So it's not like it's just one person. Both of these do have the same blaster because it's placed inside of the starter pack. Tool properties, position, and orientation. A tool's position and orientation can be changed using the grip properties. Grip POS changes the position of the grip, whereas grip forward, grip right, and grip up affect the rotation. Currently, the player is holding the center of the blaster instead of the grip. Set the grip position property to zero, negative 0.4, 
and 1.1. So let's go inside of the blaster. Don't click handle, make sure you click the blaster. And then we're going to look for grip POS. We can extend this and we can see the X, Y, and Z, and we can adjust this accordingly. So they want us to set this to zero, negative 0 0.4 and 1.1. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and click play and equip the tool. So now that we equip the tool, we can see that where we're holding the tool is actually from the handle this time. Now we can actually modify this and test this in the game, which they don't actually mention. Let's go to workspace, open up monster, and then we can actually see we're holding the blaster. So make sure you're holding the tool if you want to try to modify the grip position of it. And then let's go back down to the grip position. And let's say instead of 0.4, let's adjust this to 0.5. And we can see it actually moved up a little bit. So we could adjust this to say 0.75 that's okay. I mean, maybe like a little bit less, so just 0.7. And then let's adjust the Z to 1.5. And oh, that's actually really off. So maybe just like 1.05. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what we need to do is we would need to remember how we set this up. So if we change like grip forward, grip POS and grip right, we would need to make sure that we know all of these different numbers. But since we just changed the grip POS, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this number, then we're gonna stop the game. And then we're gonna go to blaster and we're actually gonna paste it right here. And that's kind of an easy way to figure out and modify the grip and actually see it visually adjusted in the game. Because Roblox doesn't provide a great way to do that without sort of being in the game and holding the tool. Hotbar icon. By default, the tool name will be displayed on the hotbar icon. It's good practice to change the icon to be an image of the tool. Set the texture ID property of the tool to this specific texture ID. Let's go to the tool. Let's look for the texture property. And then let's go ahead and paste that link inside of there. And then we could start our game. And we can now see that an image of the blaster is, is actually now in the hotbar rather than it just saying the name of the tool, which was blaster. Tooltip. A tooltip is a small text description that appears when the mouse hovers over a tool in the toolbar. They typically include the name of the tool and slash or a brief description of its functions. So go inside of the tool once again, and then let's look for tool tip and we can write whatever we want inside of here. So if we just wanted to say the name of the specific thing, like we could just say blaster or we could say gun, which shoots like it actually kind of give them like a little bit of a tip of what the item specifically is. Like if you have a fruit or something, you can name it plus five HP. So people understand that once you eat or use that tool, it'll actually give you plus five HP. You could write like blaster and five HP. DPS or five damage. And then when we start the game, let's hover over our toolbar and we can now see when we hover over this tool specifically, it says blaster and five damage as we put there originally. Creating player tools using scripts with tools. A tool has three key events that you can connect to. Equipped, unequipped, and activated. Equipped is fired when a tool is equipped by the player. For example, when a tool is selected in the hotbar. Unequipped is fired when the tool is unequipped by the player. For example, when the tool is deselected in the hotbar. And fired is activated when a tool is activated by the player, for example, when the player left clicks. These methods only work in local scripts because only the player's device knows when the input happens, such as the mouse button being clicked or the screen being touched if they're on mobile. Adding sounds. To see these events in action, you can play a sound when they fire. First, you'll need to create sound objects for this. So let's go inside of the handle and we are actually going to add in a sound object. We're going to rename the sound object to equip and then we are going to set the property of it to this specific one. So let's look for the sound ID property, which is right here, paste that into there. And then we could also insert another sound, but I'm just going to duplicate this and rename it to activate. And then we're once again, going to change the ID to the other specific ID that they want us to change it to. And there we go. We now have our two sounds adding the code. The example code below plays the equip sound when the tool is equipped and the fire sound when it is activated, insert a local script into the tool and name it tool controller. So inside the tool, we are going to insert a local script and we are going to name it tool controller. Insert the following lines of code into the script and I'll just kind of go through them with you. So we're going to get the tool. We're going to say local tool equals script dot parent because that would be the tool. Then we're going to create a function named tool equip. And then inside of here, we're just going to say tool dot and then we're going to get the handle and then we are going to get the equip sound and we're going to use the play function on that sound. Then we're going to create another function, local function tool activated and we're going to do the same thing we're going to go into the tool then into the handle and then we're going to get the activate sound and we are going to use the play function on that and then we are going to get the tool and this time we are going to listen for the specific events so equipped and then we are going to connect that to the tool equip function and then once again we're going to say tool and activated this time listening for the activated event we're going to connect that to the tool activated function just like that now test the blaster sound effect by equipping and clicking to activate the tool so let's go ahead and start our game so now when we equip the tool 
tool, we can hear a noise has been made. When we left click with the tool, which fired the activated event, we can now hear a laser sound has been made. Sweet. So that's the first introduction to tools, different types of ways to give them the players, how to actually script and work with them to make different noises when they're activated. And also, of course, you can use those different events such as activated and equipped to do a lot of other complex things. Like imagine if you made a pickaxe, you could then use the activated event to tell the server when the player uses the axe to chop down a tree. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. As always, if you guys did, make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notification on. If you guys are new around here and you want to get notified, if I want to upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have Patreon. If you guys like to support me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys go check it out and support me if you're feeling kind enough. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.